All right, here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. everyone this is peace and joy 505 the podcast and i'm jim whalen and you're not and today's is the halloween scary stories episode just kidding i don't like scary stories life is scary enough if you need scary watch c-span or the news or network tv prime time you can do any of that and that'll be scary enough well, I decided I'd dedicate um, this episode of Peace and Joy to um, Halloween as I look across the room and the helium-filled bat starts to sag and the ghouls just want to have fun, which batteries have finally run their course and ghouls are just getting a little fun now and, and the remains of the giveaway candy is starting to diminish so I thought I'd put a wrapper on this Halloween and I like I said I'm not I'm not a big fan of Halloween but people in my family are and I know it's the holiday we spend the second most on uh, in terms of a country and so that's cool um, it is sometimes good to get into a different costume and play a different role and, and have a little fun so so like I said, it's cool, but every Halloween, my memory goes back to uh, a time when I was eight years old, and I'm preparing to go out and do the Candy Crusade again, and for the fourth year in a row, I'm dressing up in a clown outfit, clown costume. Now, I'm not a big fan of clowns, but this costume was, was okay. And four years in a row seems like a lot, but I was a tiny kid. And, you know, how tiny? Well, let's put it this way. We had a 1956 beautiful black Crown Victoria, and I suspect about anywhere between 37 and 45 clowns my size could have fit in that that car. And... Um, piled out in the middle of the circus if necessary so I was I was fairly tiny and this clown outfit was in fact blue which is my favorite color and white and it fit well enough that you know um, I wasn't tripping or uh, anything and it also was just the right size that I never very rarely you know, needed to wear a coat. It was warm. It was made of cloth. It was, it was pretty awesome all in, all in all. So, you know, here it is Halloween night, and of course we've already, you know, done the mapping of the neighborhood. After years, you're more accurate than Google Maps or Siri in terms of knowing which neighbors give out which candies, you know, who are the people to avoid, like the ones who put a pencil or pennies in your in your bag? You want to stay away from that. Um, and, you know, you, you also know the creepy houses that you don't want to go to um, because the urban myths of putting a razor blade in apples and all that crap that never, ever really happens. Anyway, so you've got the neighborhood all mapped out and you're all ready to go. And so that leaves me, I've got my clown peril on you know the neighborhood kids have gathered we're all going to go out together and run like a horde of screaming memes with the trick-or-treat chant going reverberating around the neighborhood and 
We're all getting ready. And the last thing I have to do is put on the mask. Now, now, I was okay with the costume, but the mask, by about the second year, and certainly by the fourth year, this mask was quote-unquote plastic, but it had taken on the texture not of plastic, but some sort of chalky asbestos sort of thing. It might have been asbestos, who knows, right? And um, it wasn't at all comfortable. And there were two things that I really kind of hated about the mask. One, it smelled this odd combination of cedar and maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, mothballs. That would be the kindest word I could use it. And, you know, it was right up against my face. And, and it didn't quite fit. As, as no masks did then. I think they've done a better job now. But it didn't quite fit. And, and the slit for the mouth hole that allowed you to breathe at all um, stuck in and, and kind of cut your face. And it, it was sort of horrible, right? And it probably had saliva and sweat and, and uh, moisture built in from years and years of use and the eye holes were um, uh, minuscule um, and didn't line up with my eyes uh, and I have you know visual impairment so I couldn't see anyway and the eye holes um, you know gave about as much light as um, some star series two in 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 a in a place far far away in a time long long ago, so it was hard to see out. But but the mask was just sort of a horrible thing. And but I but I went out. You know we were ready to go, and I put the mask on, and we took off running. And you know everything was cool. We made our big haul, went around the neighborhood. You know, got back home, and did what I call the the annual exchange, which was this exercise of pouring out all your goodies, dumping out all your goodies on the table and sorting them out and and exchanging with my brother what he would eat and I wouldn't, so we'd end up with all the candy we liked. Now, personally, three Almond Joys or, or um, Mounds were a good trade for me because I I didn't like the texture of coconut, so so I could trade three or four of those for something I did like, like a Milky Way, even if it were a fun size. By the way, what's this fun size thing, right? I don't know who came up with the first fun size, but we should have found them, stopped them right then, because now we have a lot of middle class people who work for a fun size check, and, <laughs> and uh, I think a lot of our politicians have a fun size intellect. But let's move on from that. We'll just go on from that. Um, so anyway, so anyway, we're, we're in the exchange process, and by the time the exchange is done and I've eaten a couple of my candies, I've probably had um, about 47 pieces of candy. Now that year had been a particularly good haul, and I think was the world record so far for us. I think we had ended up going to 53 houses or gotten 53 pieces of candy. So it was good, and I ended up with 47, which is which is top notch in in my uh, thing you know because this trading process was some sort of mix between the NFL draft and the New York Stock Exchange right and so it was it was a complicated fun thing and it had a limited time to last because it was almost bedtime so I have almost the perfect stack of candy and so that up to that moment probably had been other than donning the mask the, the best Halloween ever Unfortunately, it didn't end then. Unfortunately, you know, I got the candy far more than we got any time of the year. We ate the candy. I probably had four pieces or something, five, and it was time to go to bed. So we go down the hall into the bedroom, and as luck or misfortune would have it, in the doorway, someone one of us three kids had left 
a matchbox car and as we shut the bedroom door to go to sleep which was our tradition that door that door was stopped just barely by the matchbox car which by the way had working doors and a working um, hood right so it was top-notch toy but anyway it stopped the door now the thing is it let in just a sliver of light which was okay because it wasn't quite as scary you know if we had a sliver of light and I hopped into bed and it wasn't gonna keep us from sleeping so hopped into bed and settled down for for the night and I was almost asleep almost made it but then I heard one of the most horrible sounds ever I heard the sound of candy being scraped across the tabletop into the red metal bowl. Now, the red metal bowl is a bowl that we reserve for family events where we put stuff in it to, like maybe popcorn or, um, you know, watermelon or something that take, took a lot of volume. So all that candy that we'd sorted and traded just perfect, my candy, not, not that candy, my candy, was getting swiped into the metal bowl along with my brother's candy. It was now community candy, right? And that was not good. That was horrible. And I wanted to go out and shout in protest, no, no, no. And I put one foot on the floor and then I remembered my parents saying, you don't come out of that room unless you're on fire or one of your brothers is on fire and you can't put him out. So. I reconsidered, thought, hey, tomorrow I can watch a couple episodes of Perry Mason and come out and make my case. So I get back into bed and try to drift off to sleep. And I just about made it when I heard this another horrible sound, and maybe the most horrible sound ever. No, it wasn't my parents making out, because it would take a whole team of psychiatrists to get me through that and we couldn't afford that but the sound I heard was that song that theme song from that show nee 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 look signpost up ahead that was the first time I ever heard that song and it was so scary scared the crap out of me I jumped in the bed pulled the sheet up over my head and hoped it would all end and ever since then Halloween hasn't quite been the same. Anyway, I think I figured two things I ought to say about that story, which is one, um, every now and then it is fun to put on a different costume, play a different role, go out there. Um, the people who know you will still know the best parts of you, just like the people in the neighborhood obviously knew who I was. And you know, I think by about five houses in, I had had that math mask off and up on the top of my head. But, but but the people who know you will know you and know that you're trying something different and they'll go with it, you know, um, and help you out. Secondly, secondly, and I think probably most importantly, is that mask thing. You can wear a mask and you can present a picture to the outside world that might not be you, right? But sometimes, if you do that for too long without paying attention, you know, you will have this problem. You will have a problem of not being able to breathe in your best and excel your best in, in the world. And you won't be able to see clearly at some point because that mask will block not only you from seeing, but others from seeing you. And that's not a good situation for peace and joy. Anyway, Halloween's over. It's the second scariest day of the year, right? Um, and I'm glad it's over. And I'm going to end with this little, with this little poem. Um, and you know, may peace and joy come to you. The poem is, is this: May you be very thankful on Thanksgiving, and may your Christmas be just the merriest. Halloween's over, we survived it. Next is Black Friday, and Lord, that's the scariest. Anyway, we made it through Halloween. 
There'll be some more podcasts coming soon. Take care. Seek peace and joy.